Hello, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Labs, and today I'll talk about acetylcholine receptor antibody test, which is used for myasthenia gravis, ocular myasthenia gravis, and thymoma. So, let's get started. So, this is part of a series. Just go to my channel, click on playlist, and it's called Labs. All kinds of labs there. If you want to be a good doctor in the 21st century, it is imperative that you understand labs. Palpation and percussion are not gonna cut it anymore. Some of you are still living in the Hippocrates era. You need to get your head out of your collective sphincters. First, myasthenia gravis. What the flip does that mean? Myo means muscle. A means no. Sthenos means strength. And I believe it was an ancient Greek god of strength. And I think in one of the woke movies that people are watching right now, there was like Thanos. I think Thanos came from Thanos, which means strength. So now I have no muscle strength. Gravis from the gravid uterus, because they thought that myasthenia was caused by pregnancy. That's why they called gravis, but that's not true. It's an autoimmune disease regardless of you being pregnant or not. Let's talk about myasthenia. Here is your brain. Draw a line in the sand. Anything in front is motor. Anything behind is sensory. So I want to move my biceps. I want to move my triceps, my quadriceps. How do I do it? You start with your primary motor cortex and then it goes down in the beautiful internal capsule and then down, 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 down until the medulla and then it will cross to the other side of your body. If you started left, you will go to the right. If you started right, you will go to the left. And this is called the motor medullary decussation. Then these fibers will descend in the spinal cord inside the beautiful corticospinal tract because we started in the cortex and we're going to the spinal cord until we reach the anterior horn cell that we desire. And then we will start a lower motor neuron, which means anything before this was called an upper motor neuron. The lower motor neuron will reach your beautiful biceps to make it contract. But between this beautiful nerve fiber and your muscle, there is a junction called a neuromuscular junction. Here is your spinal cord. Draw a line in the sand. Anything in front is motor. Anything behind is sensory. I want to contract my biceps. Should I use something from behind or from front? From the front because it's motor. You want to contract. That's a motor function. And it's going to be here. We call this the anterior horn cell. Before the anterior horn cell, we had what? The upper motor neuron from the anterior motor cell and onwards this is your lower motor neuron that's gonna reach your biceps upper motor neuron ends here and then the lower motor neuron will take over from here and this is called somatic fiber and unlike the autonomic fibers somatic fibers are not gonna relay in ganglia central nervous system brain and spinal cord peripheral nervous system cranial nerves and spinal nerves the order comes from the brain to move my biceps and then we go to the spinal cord we are still in the central nervous system and then the lower motor neuron will exit the spinal cord this is called a peripheral nervous system because that's a spinal nerve until we reach the biceps in case of the biceps this peripheral spinal nerve is the musculocutaneous nerve the structural unit of the nervous system is the neuron. These are your beautiful dendrites. The cell body or the soma is here and here is the axon. A group of somas in the CNS is called a nucleus. In the PNS is called ganglia. A group of axons in the CNS is a tract. In the PNS is a nerve. So the musculocutaneous nerve, what the flip is that? Group of nerve axons in the peripheral nervous system outside the brain and the spinal cord. This is your neuron. This is the beautiful myelin sheath. Are all axons myelinated? No, not in a world of scarce resources which have alternative uses. Myelin is amazing, but it's pretty, pretty expensive. Some of your axons are myelinated. We call them A and B. What's the difference? A are thick, B are thin. Which one is better? The thick. Oh, because the conduction velocity is 100 meters per second. B fibers are myelinated but thin. Conduction velocity is 10 meters per second. C unmyelinated and thin. This is the worst. 1 meters per second. If I want to contract my biceps by a somatic nerve such as the musculocutaneous, do I need A, B or C fibers? Try to think. Oh, I might be running from a tiger. I need to run very, 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 very quickly. Oh, it has to be A. 
myelinated and thick, the best types of fibers, also the most expensive. Ask Lionel Messi, do you want to replace your A fibers with some C fibers? Heck no. I don't know how he says that in Spanish, but I've no, it's okay. Let's talk about cholinergic fibers. Oh, that's the peripheral nervous system. That's the musculoskeletal nerve, for example. Okay, cholinergic fibers in general have three choices. They can work on muscles. We call this the neuromuscular junction. They can work on ganglia in case of the autonomic, not the somatic nervous system. Or they can work on smooth muscle, also autonomic, not somatic. Since we are talking about myasthenia gravis, we are concerned with the skeletal muscles. So we will cancel this and we'll cancel this. And let's talk about the neuromuscular junction, what some doofuses call the motor end plate. Motor end plate or neuromuscular junction is the junction between the nerve and the muscle. The muscles want to contract, but it's like the light bulb. The light bulb cannot just emit light without some electricity coming in. So electricity comes in, how? Acetylcholine, how the flip did you make this? From acetyl-CoA and choline, duh, acetylcholine. Now we will store this invaluable acetylcholine in some vesicles. And then, until they reach here, they will rupture by exocytosis. Who rupture them? Calcium, baby. Calcium is the hero of contraction. Now acetylcholine are out, out of the nerve. And then they will work on the receptor on the muscle. What's the name of this receptor? This is called N sub M. It's a nicotinic receptor sub M, M for muscle. Why do we call it nicotinic? Because nicotine, especially a small dose, can stimulate this receptor. Tell me about myasthenia gravis. It's an autoimmune disease. It's not related to pregnancy. Pregnancy is not the cause. It's a wrong name, but I like it, because if we do not learn from history, we are doomed to repeat it. If you ignore this, a pregnant mother will come to you. Doctor, do you think pregnancy caused my myasthenia? You'll say, oh yeah, probably. This is Shut up. Shut up. It's an autoimmune disease. These antibodies are attacking this beautiful receptor. What was the name of the receptor? Nicotinic sub M at the neuromuscular junction. These antibodies are called anti acetylcholine receptor antibodies because they attack the acetylcholine receptor. No kidding. They are present in more than 80% of patients with myasthenia gravis. It's diagnostic if present. If you see those antibodies in the patient's plasma, it is diagnostic. It means she probably has myasthenia. But they do not correspond with severity. Just because the titer is high it doesn't mean that I'm having horrible symptoms. Not necessarily. Once you establish the diagnosis of myasthenia, you can monitor the level of these antibodies because they will tell you is the patient responding to your therapy or not. If you see the titer decreasing, it means good job, doctor, you are treating the patient correctly. If the titer keeps going up, you are a doofus and you better try something else. Doing the same thing and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. These antibodies are not just one type, no, 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 no. Three subtypes. You have acetylcholine receptor binding antibody. This is the most commonly used. We have acetylcholine receptor modulating antibody. If this came back negative and you still suspect myasthenia gravis, go with the second one. Acetylcholine receptor blocking antibody is the worst. It's the least sensitive. Okay, medicosis, I got the test and it's elevated. The titer is so high. What could that be? It could be one of three things. Myasthenia gravis, ocular myasthenia gravis, or thymoma. Because believe it or not, 59% of patients with thymoma actually have myasthenia gravis. Also, 10% of patients with myasthenia have thymoma. So, doctor, I'm doomed? No, 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 no. There is no test in history that's 100% accurate. It does not exist. This could be a false positive. Huh, such as what? You could have Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome or ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease. You could be taking penicillamine. Why would you take this in 2020? I have no idea. Autoimmune liver disease could also be a cause. So if you're taking penicillamine and the test is high and then you stop taking penicillamine and the test came back to normal, you should be so happy. So let's learn about myasthenia from Picmonic. Myasthenia gravis is depicted by mice in grave. What do we have? We have antibodies against the acetylcholine receptor. Here is a seagull cola. What do you get in myasthenia? My muscles are so weak and I'm so tired, so I get ptosis. Here's a toast for you. I also get diplopia or double vision. Double vision. 
muscle use will lead to weakness. The more I use my muscles, the weaker I get. As you see here, the mouse is getting weaker. The cause of death is respiratory disease. See here, the lung is in the grave. How do we treat it? Acetylcholine is trace inhibitors trying to boost the level of acetylcholine in the neuromuscular junction. Plasmapheresis, here is the fairy with plasma TV. We are basically trying to wash out these O2 antibodies from the patient's system. Thymectomy can help, and as you see here, here's a thigh for thymoma, and then thymectomy is basically you remove the tumor. If you want to learn about anti-cancer pharmacology, go to my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. I have a course for you that you can download today. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my premium courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.